Welcome to Enots Engineering, I'm Alan. This is part two of a tour of the CNC and today we'll be discussing the electrics, the computer and how it's wired up. So let's have a look. With the inverter you can control the single speed so it won't go any slower than 450 revs per minute. As you'll see that's fairly slow and I can ramp that up to any speed between 450 and 22,000. That's 1,500. 2,000. That's 10,000. 16,000. 16,000. And all that's controllable from the computer via the inverter. So when you're using it, the computer will turn the spindle on and turn the spindle off. And of course the, the, the emergency stop overrides everything, so if I press the emergency stop, it'll stop. This here is a micro switch which is a homing switch. There's one there for the x-axis. There's one inside for the z-axis which goes to the top. And there's one on the y-axis. And what happens when you tell the computer to home, it will go to the farthest axis until the switch is triggered. Now the computer and the control box are housed in this, this cupboard mainly to stop dust and dirt getting onto them. The computer is an old computer running Windows XP. It's probably 12, 13 years old. Does the job fine. It's not linked into the internet. It's not linked into emails. So all it is is a dedicated computer that just runs the machine. And I also use it on Kanban for designing and uh, making the CNC programs. This is the control box for the CNC machine. It holds the uh, electronics for the stepper motors. Uh, and I'll, I'll take the cover off so you can have a look inside. On the front of the machine you've got an on-off switch. Um, three LEDs that show me the power, 12 volt and the 5 volt. Below that I've got an input for my fourth axis, my rotary axis, with an on-off switch so that the stepper motor controller is not on all the time if I'm not using a rotary axis. And next to that I've got um, another input for my probe, my measuring probe, if I want to uh, use that with an on-off switch. The case is an old computer case, so I'll take that out now so you can have a look inside. You can see on the back we've got the cables going in for the three stepper motors, another cable that works the three limit switches, emergency stop, there's a cable that works the spindle for the speed to the inverter, then you've got your the cable that goes to the computer which is the old type 25 pin printer cable, your mains power in and the mains power going up to the screen. Just I'll just lay it on the side, take the cover off. I've got the power switched off so there's no electricity going to it. So, what have we got in here? This is the original computer power supply which came with this case. So rather than throw it away I thought I'd use that. And all this powers is the 5 and 12 volt accessories, lighting, and um, anything else I need a 5 or 12 volt supply for I'll take from this computer. If you take this out, slides out, put that on the 
top there. You can see underneath got 36 volt power supply for the stepper motors. We've got the breakout board. That's where all the wires come in and go out to the computer. So the plug on the back is a 25 pin, USB plug there. And all the wires going into that are for stepper motors, for setting the machine to its uh, initial setup, its home. Here we've got one, two, three, four stepper motor controllers. And each have got little switches on to set the settings. They're all identical, so if one fails, I've got a spare, I can swap them round. Um, they've all got the power supply in on one side and the digital supply on the other goes to the breakout board. I've also got a set of relays here. These are only used for my um, touch probe. And this side here, this is the connection from the, the computer to the inverter. USB goes in here, converts it through an RS-485 which is basically two wires which go to the inverter. That allows you then to control the speed of your spindle through the inverter to the computer. It looks complicated but obviously you build that up as you assemble the, the CNC machine. And I use the fan off the power supply. Both power supplies have got fans and they keep the... The electrics don't really get hot. These stepper drivers, they stay cool. They've all got lights on to show you if there's any faults. So I'm quite pleased with it. It works well. On the computer screen you can see the program that controls the CNC machine. This program is called Mark III. This is one of the four or five screens that you can pull up. You can download this free of charge on a trial. So what does it do? This program controls the information from the computer to the CNC machine. It controls the stepper motors, the position of the tool, the spindle speed, the feeds, uh, everything else to do with the CNC side. On Mark III you've got various pull down menus. This one is the inputs for ports and pins. You can see their motor outputs and this gives you the information for the computer to know which pin uh, each stepper motor is on. On the right hand side of the screen you've got the controls for the spindle. From this you can control the speed, increase the speed, the decrease the speed and switch the spindle on and off. Next to that you've got the feed rate control. You can type in a figure for the feed or you can do that in the program. You can increase the feed as the machine's working or decrease it or reset it. It shows you the percentage of increase and the speed that the machine's going. Next to that we've got the tool information. Now the tool information tells the computer what size cutter you're using, the length of the cutter and it will remember that on a tool chart on this side the screen represents there the G code that's running. Let me just load a, G a code. This is for the Nexus holder base that I did a video on. You can see there that it's loaded the G code. This is the actual computer code that tells the CNC where to move, what to do. It gives you the movements. And on the right hand side you get an interpretation of what's going to actually happen as you run through that code. At the moment you can see that there's a little white line there and that is where the program is at the moment on that that white line. So as you run through the code the white line will move further along showing you what's going to happen 
with the, uh, the, the cutter. So as I scroll down the program, you can see on the right each operation that the CNC machine will do. On this screen, you can actually input G-code directly into the machine. So if you want to have a practice with your G-code here, you can type in the lines of code and see that the machine moves from point A to point B. You can actually use it to prove that your axes are working correctly. Um, you can put your tool offsets. This screen is the toolpath screen, which shows you the toolpath of the CNC program, shows you the program. It's similar to the uh, first screen, but it's just bigger. It gives you more information about the program limits, so the, the move maximum and minimum in each axis. This screen shows the diagnostic screen. That's the computer frequency there, and it shows you the pins on you, your printer cable, that all the pins are working, connected, and below that you've got various um, lights that light up that show you something's working or not working. You've also got your limit switches, so when you go to home, you can see each which trigger and activate. It's a useful screen to finding out if something's wrong or what it could be. So I'll go back to the first screen. Uh, we can go on for ages about this and it'll start getting too boring. But there is a lot of information in there and there are a lot of things on the program that will help you set up the machine and run the machine. Now basically this program tells the CNC machine what to do, how to do it, but also you need to get some way of actually doing the program in the first place. Right, so you've, you've built your CNC machine, you've fitted your stepper motors to it, you've made your electrical box with your stepper drivers in and connected that up. You've connected your breakout board to your computer. You've loaded Mark III. Now what do you do? Well, I suppose you want to make some sort of CNC program to run and to cut a job. So this screen shows you a program called Kanban. By the way, all of these that I'm talking about, Kanban, Mark III, and CNC programs, you, there are lots of videos on YouTube dealing with each specific program. So this will basically allow you to draw a part and from that part produce a CNC code. Here we've got some graph paper. And from that graph paper, you can set this graph paper it's in imperial, metric, whether it's one square a millimeter or ten squares to the millimeter, you can set it to whatever you like, whatever colour. So what we're going to do is basically I'll draw a square, I press the rectangle, press and mark out where we want the square, there's the square. If I want a hole in the middle of that square, move to the centre where the cross is, there's the hole. Show the axes, show the axes down here. Um, basically what we've got on these axes is X, Y and Z. Move round various positions. This is a zero point. But basically as you draw an item, it will come up on the side here. And then if you want to machine an item, you just select the machine there, select the item, the circle. Here you've got your position of the circle, which is 65 in X, 111 in Y, 0 in Z, that being the surface of the material is 0. This is the diameter of the circle, let's make it 30. So I'm going to make a 30mm hole that positions on the material. So I select the hole, go up to the top here and you can see I can make a profile, a pocket or make a drilled hole. So if I make the profile it then comes down and asks me here if I want to make it inside or outside, speeds, feeds and the tool I'm going to use. So 
Let me go down to the bottom, say I'm going to use tool number three. It'll put the diameter, it's an end mill, three millimeter, puts the information in. And if I wanted to cut the square, I want to do another profile, you slowly build up the information you need to make the CNC program. So what I'm going to do is open, I don't want to say that, open the program for the Nexus base. Is the program I've already loaded. You can see then once you've got your, your once you've got the profiles that you need or the, the machining operations you can then produce your G-code. Just done it. You can see there the where the tool's going to go, the dark colours of the actual tool, and what side of the line it's going to cut. These little squares are they're called tabs and it just leaves a small area of material still fitted to the to each other so that the the parts are held together. So once we've produced the, produced the code, we can then edit the code if you need to, and you can see here various codes. Um, once you've done that, you can then load it to Mark Three, set the position of the job, and cut your part. Thanks for watching. I hope that explains some of the mysteries of CNC to you, and we'll see you next time on Enots Engineering.